Hello, thank you for joining me today for our presentation called Pre-Teaching Vocabulary in Context with Visuals. My name is Tammy Edwards. I'm a Secondary World Languages Specialist. Our objective today is to experience how to pre-teach vocabulary in context using stories and visuals. This presentation is modified from a presentation by Beth Skelton. So why do we have to focus so much on academic vocabulary and visuals with our students? Let's look at what a typical day is for our student. All of these content area words come from the seventh grade unit two curriculum. So our students go to math where they have to learn the words complementary, supplementary, and adjacent. Not only do they need to learn the words, they need to learn the concept behind the words too. Then they go on to science class where they learn muscular, reproductive, and digestive. Then we go to social studies where it's region, basin, and plains. And finally, they go to English and they learn character, plot, and theme. Okay, just stop for a minute and think about the word theme. What does it really mean? It's not a simple definition, and it's often not easily taught with one exposure. Think about how much they are exposed to that word in their years of instruction. Hey, even as an adult, I'm still working on that word. All of this they do before lunch. This is a very heavy academic load for our students. After lunch, thank goodness for our electives, where you go to music class and you might have quarter note, rest, and refrain. And then we go to PE and you think, goodness, it's done. But no, it's not. They encounter academic language there too. They learn resistance training, endurance, and isometric exercise. It's all academic language all day long. And because of that, we really need to be thoughtful about how we're teaching our vocabulary and how we're supporting our students in getting it. So we hear all the time, we need to pre-teach our vocabulary, but we also hear that we need to teach vocabulary in context. Well, which is it? We can do both. I'm going to show you in this demonstration. I've chosen four crazy vocabulary words. They're in English, but I'm hoping you don't know them. I've put them in the story format, but to see where your word knowledge is first, let's do a self-assessment. Rate your knowledge on these words. One is I have no knowledge of this word whatsoever. Two is I've heard it and I kind of know what it is. I have a general sense of the word. And three, I know the word well and I can use it. Here we go. First word, borborygmus. Do you have no clue what this word means? A general sense of the word or I know the word well enough to use it. The second word, call it. No clue what this word means. Do you have a general sense of the word or do you know it well enough to use it? The next word is defenestrate. I have no clue what this word is, have a general sense of the word, or I know the word well enough to use it. And our last word is hallux. I have no clue what this word means, I have a general sense of the word, or I know the word well enough to be able to use it. Okay, so let's start our story. This boy came home from school and he was so hungry that his stomach was just growling the whole time, growling so loudly. And he said, Mom, I have borborygmus and need a snack. You can't see me but I'm rubbing my hands on my stomach in a circular motion like I'm starving. So let's try to say the word like it sounds. I'm gonna go borborygmus. Let's say it together, borborygmus. And as I say it, I'm rubbing my tummy with my hands like I'm starving. Now let's try this sentence. I have borborygmus when, when does your tummy rumble? I have borborygmus when I haven't eaten in a long time. I get borborygmus. 
So that's the first problem that this little boy had. He came home and he was hungry. He had borborygmus, but his mom couldn't help him. She said, I don't have time to get you a snack right now. We have to sort the collet to get it ready for the recycling bin before the truck comes. So mom pulled up the collet and she said, please sort all of this collet and put the collet in the bin. And what's not collet, just put it on the side because we have to get the collet in the bin. So he held up an object and he asked himself, is it collet or not collet? And he discovered that this one is collet and he put it in the bin. Then he picked up another one and he said, is it collet or is it not collet? And he kept working through the whole box of collet or not call it. All that glass that he had to get together for recycling, he got it into one bin and it was big and it was full and mom picked up that big full bin of cullet and as she was walking through the house to get it to the curb, all of a sudden you hear, ow, and a crash. She stubbed her left hallux. If you look at the picture, is his mom's left hallux painted pink or blue? Blue, yes. The hallux is the big toe. If you would take a moment and draw a foot with an arrow pointing at a big toe. I can look at your drawing and say, oh my goodness, you drew a nice hallux. You could look at your own hallux. Do you have color on your hallux or on your big toes? So, this poor little boy. He still has borborygmus. The collet is all over the floor where mom dropped it when she stubbed her hallux. And this is not turning into a very good afternoon. The boy is frustrated. Mom is frustrated. The collet is everywhere on the floor. And they're just trying to pick up all this broken glass for recycling. Really, all they want to do is throw it out the window. Just throw it out the window. She wants to defenestrate it because she is so frustrated. Defenestrate it means out the window with it. So let's break down this word into its word parts. The D that is in green here means out or away. That's D, out or away. Fenestre is blue. Fenestre, the root word in French or Latin, it means window. And then eight at the end in pink tells us that this is a verb. So when you put it all together, we know that defenestrate is a verb. That means to throw it out the window. So now I want you to think about something really frustrating. Something that makes you so frustrated that you want to defenestrate it. Imagine yourself grabbing that thing in your hands. You find the nearest window, think of that item as you defenestrate it. You throw it out the window. You have defenestrated it. So thank you for listening to my story about a boy who had borborygmus. He was so hungry that he couldn't eat because he had to sort the collet. And then the collet fell on the floor when mom stubbed her hallux and she just wanted to defenestrate it. And the poor boy still has borborygmus. Now I know you couldn't see me doing some of the actions and gestures, but hopefully having the visuals on the screen, you have an idea of how this works. Now I'm going to ask you to think back to our little story with those four words and I want you to rate yourself now. How well do you know these words? If you were to rate yourself again on the scale of one to three, one being I have no idea what this word means, two being I have a general sense of this word, and three means I know it and can use it in a sentence, what would you rate yourself on these three words? I hope you rate yourself as a three because we have gone over the words and you can now use them in a sentence. So I want you to think back on your story again and I want you to think about which strategies you saw modeled in this story. So first of all, there was context. 
there was a story or an experience that you had with the vocabulary before the text was read. The experience could also be an experiment, but whatever it is, you're using vocabulary in context. We hear that we need to pre-teach vocabulary, but this wasn't exactly pre-teaching vocabulary. This was teaching vocabulary in context, because if you pre-teach out of context and you just give your kids a list of random words, they're going to have a hard time applying it when they get to the story itself. Then I provided you with multiple exposures to the word in a variety of contexts. You may have noticed that each of the words had several different types of strategies attached to them, whether that was a gesture or a visual or whether it was a sentence frame to practice it. You were doing different things with the terms. And then of course the repetition. I kept going back to the story and retelling the story using the words in context. I used a variety of visuals. I used realia to show the collet. I had a cartoon boy. I had a color picture of a hallux. I had my own drawing of defenestrate. All of these types of visuals hit the brain differently, and some students remember different types of visuals differently. So the students can make their own drawing like you may have done for hallux, and then I had a drawing for defenestrate, so there are different ways of showing that visual. And of course, we used gestures and we acted out the terms. The gesture for Borg Borigmus was rubbing the tummy like our tummies are growling and grumbling. And then we acted out Defenestrate when we threw it out the window. Acting out terms is a huge memory boost. We highlighted cognates and we made native language connections. I did that with Defenestrate and Fenestrate. Anytime you can show that a term is very similar in multiple languages, it helps make connections for our students. We taught the prefixes, the suffixes, and the root words, again with the word defenestrate. Knowing these word parts can greatly expand a student's vocabulary. Even if they don't know the entire word, they can get close to a definition if they know the prefix or the root and then they'll know the part of speech if they knew the suffix. And then finally, we asked lots and lots of questions using the vocabulary in the question itself. So is this call it or not call it? I'm not actually having the students say the word, yet they're hearing it over and over again. When do you have Borbrigmas? And then in their answer, I gave a sentence frame. It's another strategy to model. Then, if we had been in person, I would have integrated some partner talk. Turn to your partner and tell them when you have Borbergmas. Show your partner your drawing of a hallux. Look at your partner's hallux. Does it have paint on it or not? Also personalize the words. For example, when do you have Borbergmas? I'm making it personal. I have Borbergmas when I smell a hamburger, like the boy in the picture. What do you have in your collet? I had a bottle of vanilla syrup and balsamic vinegar. Draw a picture of what you have in your cullet or tell your partner what you have in your cullet. This is another way to provide multiple exposures and different contexts for vocabulary. There is no one magic bullet. Our students need multiple strategies and every word may be different strategies. Every word may not need a gesture. Not every word needs a drawing, but they all need to be exposed in multiple ways with a variety of context. I thank you for listening to me and to my story about visuals and vocabulary and context. Have a good rest of your day.